Hello everyone. Today I will introduce all of you to the topic of natural language processing. So in this lecture, I talk about what is natural language processing, what are the daily uses of natural language processing in different applications, and why this task is very, very challenging. So before going to the definition of natural language processing, let's look at the phrase natural language processing. How do we interpret it? So if we consider the natural language together as a nominal phrase, we can see that this means processing of natural language. So what is natural language then? Natural language is a language that has been developing for the purpose of communication among humans. So it is naturally developing. It's not created artificially. And then definitely in this context, the question comes that what is the main difference between natural language and uh, artificial language like programming language? Both of them actually have um, the syntax, but the syntax in the artificial language like programming language is very strict. It does not allow you to evaluate, uh, go through the uh, continuous evaluation. But uh, the natural language, because the syntax is not strict, it's much more fluid, it has the ability to evolve naturally. And not only that, this is a good thing, but on the other hand, uh, because the syntax is fluid, more ambiguity is introduced in the, uh, in the language. The meaning of something change with the uh, perspective of word knowledge. And definitely, as I said, that one particular uh, phrase may have very different meaning because we can interpret it differently. And that's why it has certain well formness inside it. So when we will do the processing of natural language, we need to deal with this ambiguity, ill formness, and the continuous evaluation characteristics of it. Now coming back to the interpreting the phrase natural language processing, Another way you can actually interpret this particular phrase, you consider the language processing one phrase, and then definitely the meaning comes as the natural way of language processing, like how human brains actually process language. That is a completely different subject. And when we talk about natural language processing, we mainly want it to mean processing of natural language. And this help us to understand or use the machine to understand the language and communicate with us. So we'll first let's see what are the application of this processing of language. Um, so here, the very first, uh, I'll not talk about many applications, but we use very different application every day, which actually requires processing of natural language. For example, Consider this uh, mail service. So you all know we many of us actually use Gmail or Yahoo or Hotmail. And many of these mail services actually come up with the recommendation for reply. Now, how they come up with the recommendation of reply unless they understand what are the content of the subject or the content of the mail. So definitely they have to process what has what about the mail. The particular person has received, understand the mail, and then only a feasible and a correct, valid response um, phrase can be generated as suggestions. So this we definitely use many cases. And then another application which extensively use natural language processing is the search. And we use Google search every day in there. So here, unless the system understand what actually the user's requirement, what the user pose in a natural language, the search engine would be unable to give you the relevant answer. So it is very important that the search engine understand the query coming from humans 
process it and understand the information user want. Then only they can actually give you the result. And the last one I need not to really talk about more uh, regarding this particular application. We all know about it, that is a chatbot. Now, chatbot is currently not only really used for a very general purpose like Siri or ChatGPT, but it also used almost every um, kind of domain specific uh, companies um, and they create their domain specific chatbot to help with the customer's query. There are many, many more applications which we use day by day which requests such processing. So there is no uh, way to say how uh, important by listing this application. It's really, really handy. So let's look now uh, that why when this is actually such an important task to do processing the natural language, what exactly we mean by processing a natural language. So what we mean, we mean that uh, we try to analyze and design a computational agent that use natural language to acquire information from other agents, human, or machine. This definition is more like um, coming from the flavor of AI, where we are saying that we try to create a agent that has ability ability of human being, and in this particular case to use the language as human use. So to do that, we mainly needed to, the machine mainly needs to do two things. One, the very first step is to understand the unstructured text, that what we say that basic language, unstruct that understand them, and make this unstructured text to such a structured manner so that the machine understand what are the informations given in that particular text. On the other hand, there is the second step where machine already have the non-linguistic representation of information and they have to process those information and present it as a natural language. And then only they can get the ability as human in terms of acquiring the language and understanding the language. So these are the two tasks, natural language understanding and natural language generation together comes under natural language processing. Now, definitely um, here, the first task, the natural language understanding is far more difficult than natural language generation. Because in the natural language understanding, you have a very huge amount of information not written, written not in a way that machine can understand. And from that information, they have to understand those pieces. Uh, and then only they can find it or represent it as a structured in way so that they can process it for further. On the other hand, in the language natural language generation, the information is already structured and very well understood by the machine. It just needs certain policy to change those information to a format of natural language. So preciseness is required much more in the natural language understanding. So now let's move further to see um, interpret one particular phrase. And with this, we'll start talking about the challenges uh, in the natural language understanding. So here I've uh, put a um, phrase with five words, hurry, get the hot chips. Now, how do we interpret them? This words definitely has meaning. And together also, all these five, words giving some particular meaning to us. So if you look at the first semantic, the word semantic, the way we can interpret it is that we are asking 
quick uh, get the hot chips. Now, see here, hot, the semantic meaning of hot can have two different meanings, right? So either a chips, which is very hot, considering that the uh, chips we are mentioning is a food, and then the hot chips become warm chips. On the other hand, we can see that this hot can also mean spicy. So I'm telling, get the hot chips, but it's very difficult to understand whether I'm asking for a warm chips or a spicy chips. Not only that, I can think this chips two different ways. One is food, and there is some uh, semiconductor chips, right? So in that case, when I'm looking at the word get, this may be aligned with the remove. So in a lab scenario, you have a very hot semiconductor. So that definitely not going to either get the word spicy, but it is going to get the word warm. And this warm semiconductors, I would like to remove. So get here is to remove, it will be more appreciatable. So here you can already see, we're looking at the context and then we are slowly building the meaning of it. So if it's a semiconductor, the hot means going to be definitely the warm and the gate is more towards leaning towards the meaning of remove. On the other hand, we can also see the syntax. So if you look at the hurry, get the hot chips, and if we really go with the syntax that a sentence must have a subject, a verb, and then the object, something like that, then we can think of that maybe some phonetically must have happened and it's not about hurry and it's about hurry, I mean, get the hot chips. Or if we say, no, there's no need to have that particular subject here, then we can say that the hurry is actually the quick uh, um, we are talking about. So the syntax also played the role to interpret this particular phrase. And then lastly, come to the word knowledge. If we know that the situation the no here is actually whether, how do I come up with that this could be a semiconductor chip? Because this is an environment like lab. If it is a food, then definitely it is a certain kind of conversation we are having or some people are having, right? And on the other hand, if you think that this came up on a web portal, right? That is also possible. So if it is coming up with a web portal, then definitely this is actually a advertisement. So this become advertisement for hot chips. So it is selling the chips and you can consider in that case, hot is representing selling quickly. So it's another meaning coming with the hot. So there are many different ways you actually can uh, interpret this particular five words. And those semantic context, syntax, word knowledge are very important how to, how, when you interpret this particular sentence. So we'll talk about more that how it helps, how it helps in understanding. So the very <clears throat> um, lower level, when you take a bottom-up approach of the language understanding, the unit we can consider word, and in word label, we can have few things we need to understand. One is the lexical semantics, that is the meaning of the words. The second is the morphology, that some words often change uh, its word form to emphasize uh, whether the tense is different, whether it's past tense or present tense, uh, like we say run to ran. And then um, we, for singular to plural, we consider the multiple cat, then we say cats rather than saying only single cat, emphasizing like C-A-T cat. So there are many things, uh, 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 this morphological change often happens. 
and these things also needed to be analyzed at the world level. And the third thing is the part of speech tagging that is exactly talking about the grammar of the word, that whether the word, a particular word is a verb or noun or um, adverb and so on. So these three are the main understanding portion that we need to do at the word table. Now, coming to the next hierarchy that multiple words can be combined together to prepare a sentence. And when we create a sentence, then again, if you look at the grammar, we cannot use randomly um, join the, the words and say something, then it will be an invalid sentence. People will not be able to understand. So definitely certain grammar needed to be followed, like subject comes, um, after the verb and then an uh, object comes. And there are already existing rules for that in English and every language. But not only following that the subject must come after, um, the verb must come after the subject and this has to be connected with some object doesn't say that it's a valid sentence. For example, rather saying, um, I eat the food. If I say food eat the me, Definitely, uh, it's a not a valid sentence, but you can see that we are using the same words. I just make the change the position, the food still be a noun, right? And it is a subject, I can say. And then again, it is a verb. It's perfectly fine. I or me, whatever I am using, it's still a noun and it can be object. So not only that, just following the grammar can help us to actually say a meaningful things. There has to have a compositional semantics that needs to be validated as well. So this is the uh, sentence label understanding we have to come up with. And then there could be the multiple sentences together and we often doesn't repeat the same word or same noun multiple times. We use pronoun there. So it is very important that we correctly code for or correctly identify which noun that particular pronoun is referring to because one particular sentence might have many different nouns. And that's actually an Aporella solution. And last two things, which are the pragmatics and inference, are also very important in language understanding. And it's very difficult as well. So if you look at the pragmatic, what it means that there is certain semantic meaning of certain sentence, but the intention is different. For example, if I ask, um, what is your, what is the time? My intention is not actually asking whether some person know what time is, but I'm most probably asking the, whether he knows what time it is, right? So it's uh, three o'clock, four o'clock, so on. And lastly, if you look at the inference, we see many things, but often those things are um, very, uh, has many other things hidden inside that information we do not explicitly mention, right? So if I'm saying that I'm eating and uh, then definitely, we know that there is certain food is there that we can eat, right? Or if I say, okay, I just came back from the school, definitely uh, we know that I'm already registered to a school. So those things are very, um, very common sense, which has been not mentioned exactly in the sentence, but often it is required to understand the language. We often need to infer those information. So here we'll talk about few challenges. Like here, the scenario is the dive you know, uh, airplane and someone asks, uh, the, uh, the air hostess asks, coffee or tea? Definitely the answer would be coffee because I'm assuming that she's asking or she's offering what beverage is do I want to take. But um, thing is that it's very rare that she's actually joking, but in this scenario, it's a very good energy joke we do that the other waitress said, wrong, it's a tea. So this is actually uh, the scenario what 
I wanted to put here to explain that with the word knowledge, the meaning of certain phrase change. And it's very difficult and very challenging task for a machine to understand. So we'll see here something in this, all those level I have just discussed that what are the ambiguity or challenge we can have. For example, see the sentence, will, 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 will. It's a five sentence with the same word. And that's the lexical ambiguity because all this word, even though uh, all of them are same, um, they actually means different things. So this is actually a model verb. This is actually a noun, like a person here. This is actually the var. This is another person. And this is actually the legal document, another noun phrase that means the legal document. So it's very difficult for machine to actually understand that. This is uh, coming the lexical ambiguity. The another challenge is a structural ambiguity. So when I say, say saw her with the binocular on the hill, whether I mean that she saw her, sorry, her with the binocular or she saw her with the binocular. C and binocular is linked. Huh? So the binocular is linked with C. And here, the her is linked with the binocular. So this has come with the structural ambiguity. Both actually, this sentence is perfectly fine, grammatically correct, but we can interpret it differently. It's the same how, how we start the lecture with the natural language processing. Then there are other cases like impreciseness, the way a particular word can be perceived by one person um, can be perceived by another person differently. For example, as a, a here in, as an Indian, maybe really cold is the temperature of 12 or 13. On the other end in Alaska, um, it, it mean it's the summer temperature. So when I say it's really cold there, uh, maybe for another person it might not be that cool. So that impreciseness makes it very difficult to uh, understanding, um, make it difficult to understand the language. But another thing is that conjunction and the negation together, like I hit in this particular example, it's very difficult to say whether Joe like pizza with no cheese or Joe like pizza with no tomatoes as well. Right? We don't understand it properly from here. There are other problems like referential problem, uh, like Joe yelled at Mike, he had broken the bike. From the context, I have to understand that uh, here, uh, Mike is actually uh, what is referred by he, not Joe, right? There are other cases like what he's talking about, implication, word knowledge, inference. For example, here I'm giving that, uh, this particular phrase, I was like, because my car broke down, implies I have a car, I use the car to get certain place, and there is certain time where it's uh, when I should be uh, reaching there, but I couldn't miss that, um, I missed that time because why I'm late. The pragmatic I have already discussed, and the most difficult thing is the humor and sarcasm, because many cases the humor and sarcasm comes from the idea that what exactly my intention to say and what I'm saying, it's exactly opposite. So it's a very, very difficult task. So let's see how those ambiguity or the challenge actually uh, affect the application we use day to days. For example, I, um, as, um, if you travel a lot, then definitely we bound to use the uh, machine translation, right? We translate one uh, language to another language. That's a machine translation. We use Google Translate often. So this is actually an example of Google Translate. It says she was cool. What I wanted to mean that she's very smart, street smart or intelligent. But um, here, uh, you know, in a language, Bengali, which is a low resource language here, they find it, uh, they translate it that um, she was calm, right? Which is very different meaning than what I intend to. And this problem is not difficult for animation. 
it's very difficult for human being as well when pepsi comes to china to um, they come up with this slogan come alive with pepsi generation and a human interpreter actually a uh, translator actually translated to the pepsi brings your relative back from the dead if you look at this there is a direct relation like come alive has direct relation to uh, back from the dead and you can see the generation has certain things to your relative and pepsi is talking about with pepsi has something to do with brings pepsi brings so this is a very very difficult task second thing again with the semantic ambiguity we see that when i search which car is best in price uh, rupees 1000k it's a poorly formed sentence but sometimes we often do that we don't write on a very uh, clear form and then what happens that um, even though i have mentioned rupees and i have mentioned 1000k which is actually a valid range for the car like 10 lakh here but still what i'm getting is all the cars below 1000 cc right so um what happening here that they really check this thousand and take this keyword and match it with this keyword which is very different meaning for the with the different context with the rupees it means the monetary value with the cc it means actually the engine capacity so if we miss those context we miss the correct semantics we are ending up with the wrong results which actually not giving us a very effective application and lastly i want to mention it happened in i think 2020 2021 time in france this is based on gpt3 they created a chatbot nabla if you look at the phrase you can see that nabla is suggesting one person to kill herself or himself so this is actually unacceptable in society right if you look at the, the it's not that nabla did not understand the context clearly he, he has this bot has understood the context perfectly but the thing is that it's not acceptable in the society and that's why this is again not effective but um, there are lots of things where we have actually gained lot of nice understanding of language and i'll talk about those things as well so difficulty is definitely there there and those ambiguity i discuss has to be affect on the uh, applications but there are many cases we where we perform pretty well so we are come able to come up with a system which can clearly understand the entity which even have span over multiple words huh? the french first french empire um, emperor so they are per perfectly captured or the napoleon nicely captured as the person or saint helena nicely captured as location so all these things we are actually doing much better so here from anonymity we can see these are the phrases we are collected but something i have to mention here we suddenly actually we collected waterloo as a location which is actually not wrong but when we look at to more details into the phrase and understand better we can see actually that the waterloo actually not talking about the place uh, it has a sense of place but it's actually the talking about battle of waterloo and we are actually able to disambiguate that as well in very effective manner so far and lastly um, if you look at the auto correction it works very nicely and effectively um, nowadays so here i am i put a wrong spelling for australia and the google is giving me the very correct result um, and um, working effectively so in some cases where the google uh, failed to reach the uh, or so successfully complete the task like i showed earlier in the query but in the auto correction it correctly uh, performed so here with this 
I can say that there are many, many uh, applications where actually uh, we are performing pretty well. Those are the natural language use the process, required the natural language processing, like sentiment analysis, of spam detection and filter of the spam in the uh, mail server, relation extraction, like just mentioned earlier, and with that in the example. So those are the tasks where we perform really well, but there are a lot of the tasks where we have to um, still the research is going on and we still try to um, correct and try to achieve much, much higher accuracy for those tasks. So with this, I will actually complete the introduction of natural language processing. And uh, there is a nice uh, slide to, for you to check um, what exactly talking about uh, and how ambiguous a language can be and why the language can be more difficult and challenging task for understanding uh, purpose. Thank you.